Joining me now from Gaziantep is Murat Aslan. He's currently a lecturer in security and intelligence studies at Hassan Kalyongju University. But before that, he served in the Turkish armed forces for nearly three decades. Murat, it's a pleasure to have you on TRT World. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, you've witnessed a lot in your career. Can you review the first four days of the operation for us? Thank you, Maria. My university is located very close to the Syrian border, and we faculty members are outside the uh, university, just going back and forth along the borderline to talk people to learn what is circulating around and what is media is reporting. And actually, this is the fourth day of the operation, and uh, let me sum up the main military issues that we have observed on the ground. Initially, uh, Turkish military and civilian institutions are well prepared for this operation. They were well coordinated. Turkish military was to start the operation, but civilian institutions were prepared for a probable immigrant flow towards the uh, Turkish borders. And the second issue that uh, I have noticed is the Turkish intelligence, because Turkish intelligence in this operation was heavily focused on target developments rather than persuading local public, because in Afrin, YPG had compelled Arab, Turkoman, and also moderate Kurdish tribes to leave the area. And because of that, Turkish military had changed its focus in comparison to Idlib and also Euphrate shield operations. And as a result of this intense intelligence and target development process, Turkish military started a very intense and comprehensive air and fire support campaign at the very beginning. And uh, it's one of the first in the world, I believe. There were 72 aircrafts in the air and destroying their targets with no civilian casualty. This is a very great success. If civilian casualties in Iran, I Iraq and Afghanistan is concerned, okay. uh, and during this five support uh, activity, 70% towards 75% of the ammunition and weapons were Turkish made. They were actually first used in this operation, and they were perfect, effective. They destroyed the targets with a high impact upon the terror cells, and YPG could not respond to the initial infiltration of Turkish military and FSA. Okay. Regarding FSA, uh, regarding FSA, we observed that there were almost 7,000 7, fighters in the region, and they were first used in this operation. We were trained in Turkey. Uh, they were not experienced, but very well disciplined. This is what we see. And resistance of IPG is interesting. It was at the minimal level at the very beginning. But here, this afternoon, uh, because of weather conditions, they started to resist in some regions. But uh, it depends on the weather. Okay. Murat, I just want to you know, push forward a bit and ask you what you foresee happening in the coming days. Do you expect the YPG to mount a serious resistance? Well, coming days will most likely be intense. The weather is rainy, cloudy and foggy. Uh, that means Turkish military assets will be limited to support the maneuver units. And YPG will start uh, or try to hold the key terrain to delay the advance of uh, Turkish Armed Forces and SFA, and try to increase the casualty of the Turkish Armed Forces just to create an image that they can stop the army. And they can also use some indirect tactics at, as uh, rebellions in Afghanistan and Iraq had used, like IEDs, improvised explosive devices, for instance, or mines or ambushes or remotely controlled uh, rocket fires, as they are currently doing towards the cities of Turkey. And uh, I think one another option for YPG is the black propaganda, because they broadcasted some images of the killed civilians, but later then it was uh, clear that these photos were captured from the previous conflicts in Iraq or Syria. And one another option of YPG in the coming term is to mobilize their supporters in European capitals. They can hold meetings and also agitate the Turkish public in these countries.
countries. And at the final stage of the operation, what I believe is that YPG will try to resist, especially in urban areas, because they can easily defend these cities by holding houses and also having them as a kind of shelter for their defense. Okay. And what, Murat, uh, I'm going to, sorry to interrupt you, I'm we're going to have to leave it there. It's been really great to have your analysis with um, three decades of experience serving with the Turkish armed forces. And that was Murat Aslan for us in Gaziantep, currently a lecturer in security and intelligence studies.